Coming up, the story of a monumental number one hit that defined its time from the principal members of the group. It all happened because this singer left his wallet in a New York cab. He realized this when he got to his hotel room and his wife said, hell, you'll never see that again. They got a call minutes later from a stranger who had found the wallet, wanted to return it. This stranger happened to be a huge producer that would lead to one of the most legendary songs ever. Find out how it all came together directly from them, coming up on Professor of Rock. Hey, music junkies, Professor of Rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. You know, if you want the straight stories behind Rock's legendary hits from the actual artists, from those who are there in the room creating it, you're going to want to subscribe below right now. Click the bell so that you always know when our latest interviews and stories are going to come out. And to check out our exclusive content on Patreon and our latest merch, including our uh, amazing Vintage Years collection from uh, amazing artist Thomas Estrada. He did all the rapping stuff, or does that. I'm ecstatic to bring you yet another episode from our series, Revelations, where featured artists go deep on their greatest songs and albums, insight into the biggest hits of all time, and stories you won't find really anywhere else. The interview coming up will make you believe in the cosmic power of music. It's just unbelievable. He lost his wallet in a New York City cab. His wife told him what he already knew. He'd never see his wallet again. And then he got a call that changed his life. Billy Davis Jr. and Marilyn McCoo, who were original members of The Fifth Dimension, they had just swept the Grammy Awards with their big hit uh, from the brilliant Jimmy Webb classic, Up, Up, and Away. Up, up and, away. and yet Billy losing his wallet would lead to an even bigger hit, even more Grammys. Uh, with the transformational psychedelic soul number one classic, The Age of Aquarius, Let the Sunshine In. Uh, with the Wrecking Crew playing on it and the great Bones Howl, you know, his brilliant idea to combine two songs. This is the dawning of the age of Aquarius. As it was, Hall of Fame songwriter Jimmy Webb was actually there with the Wrecking Crew in the studio at Bones Howe, and he remarked that this was going to be a surefire number one hit. Find out how the song came to them from this amazing husband and wife team coming up next. And as we go into this interview, I do want to thank our sponsor, Zenny Eye, where the glasses I jam every day. One of the best things about uh, these frames, these glasses, is that when you go to Zenny, when you go to their app or at zenny.com, you can customize your eyewear with a particular uh, prescription lens or non-prescription lens. You know, if you just want the cool look or color or a particular style of lens, check it out today at the Zenny app or zenny.com. Here's Marilyn and Billy. Aquarius was massive. Six weeks at number one on the pop charts, it was the second biggest hit in 1969, number one in the AC charts, number one in Canada, it went platinum, it won record of the year and song of the year just two years after you won both of those awards for Up, Up and Away. That was like the Michael Jackson thriller of its time, <laughs> right? Because it won like five or six Grammys for that particular song. Yes, mm -hmm. it did. Yeah. As a matter of fact, when we won our Grammy, for, for Up, Up and Away, Grammys weren't even on television then. No, so right, no. We didn't even know what a Grammy was. Oh, wow. <laughs> but uh, when we won the Grammys, uh, it, was, it was really, really special. And then when Aquarius came along, we knew what Grammys were then. Oh, yeah. And so then when yeah. we got the nomination for Record of the Year, that year, then we wanted to win. Yeah. It was like, yeah, man, if right. we can't win with Aquarius, we can't win with anything. <laughs> and uh, I don't remember who all was nominated, was, was nominated and who we were time, up against right, that right. time. But well, of course, you're one of only a handful of acts that have won two record of the years. The last person who was Bruno Mars, of course. But, well, uh, well, I well, know. You know and that just right, kind of right, tells right, the younger right. generation yeah. where you guys were at. There's a cosmic thing that was going on. You guys were supposed to do this song. Yeah. Tell me the right, story right, about right. in the taxi. Oh, you know the story. <laughs> I do. You do. Both okay. The viewers have got to hear it. We're in New York. We're working at the uh, Royal Box, which is a, a, a room that they have inside the Americana Hotel. So I'm out shopping one day and uh, getting a cab to come back to the hotel and some kind of way I, my wallet falls into the cab and I, I get out, pay the guy, and 
yeah. and going upstairs. And I get upstairs, I'm searching for my wallet. And I told Marilyn, I said, baby, I, I, I lost my wallet. Marilyn said, well, baby, you can forget it. <laughs> you, you, you in New York City. It's too it's many over. Yeah, it's yeah over. you're not going to see that You'll wallet again. You'll never see that again. <laughs> I said, my, my hopes just went straight down. I said, well, you're right, you know. Because I had all my credit cards. I had all the stuff in oh, there. Oh, yeah. And uh, so about an hour later, an hour and a half later, I get we get this call. Ray is it? Hello? And, and, and the guy says, is this Billy Davis Jr.? I said, well, yes, it is. He said, I got your wallet. <laughs> wow! Said, I said what? I said, well, okay, where where you? Yeah, you I, think I'm gonna bring it you to think you? Think I'm gonna bring it to? Yeah, he's, he's getting really getting smart. I said, no, don't worry about it. I'll come and get it right now. You know. So I went over and I picked up my wallet, and and I was gonna offer him some money. I was, you know, I was, hey, I yeah. was glad to get Grateful. it. Grateful. And yeah. and he said, no, that's all right. He said, I said, well, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna invite you to our show over to the Americana so you can see our show. Yeah. And he said, okay, great, great. So yeah. him and his wife came over and they saw the show. And then after the show, they came backstage and said, Billy, we said, we, we really like the show. So you guys are wonderful. He said, but now, since you were so great to invite us to your show, we'd like to invite you to our show. I said, what show is that? You know, never heard of it. He said, hair. <laughs> what? I mean, we went nuts because first of all, we've been trying to get in to see hair. Nobody could get in. It was the Hamilton of its day. It, 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 was a, it really it was, was. Yes, yeah. it was definitely in Hamilton. Everybody was standing in line. Tickets were so you couldn't get in. First of all, it was the first time anybody saw anybody naked on stage. Yeah, <laughs> you know, so everybody wanted to see. They wouldn't believe it. It's the naked people. <laughs> <laughs> so now we get this invitation to go see hair. What was the name of the person that found your wallet and called you? Oh, that's right. His name was Ed Gifford. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. Ed Gifford. Gotta remember He's one, that. Of, the, one yes. of the producers yeah. of Hair. So we get in the theater, and there's a young man by the name of Ronnie Dyson belting out this beautiful song, Aquarius. When the moon is in the seventh house. He's just going in, and we're sitting there looking at that. He said, oh man, we gotta do this song. So during the intermission, we all kind of gathered in the corridor. Yeah. And, and we said, hey, we got to do that song. That's a song. That's a hit for us. And somebody yeah. said, let's call Bones right now. I said, well, yeah, okay, let's call him. Dude. Somebody, I don't know. It wasn't me who called him. Somebody called Bones. Bones, we got to do this song. Where is it? Bones said, oh, I don't know. Bones said, the song's been done two or three times. He said, yeah, they know it, but we haven't done it. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be a hit for us, you know. <laughs> Just sure enough, when we got back, we yeah. did we did Aquarius. And well, the, well you, you missed a very important okay, part, Okay, tell, tell it. So, <laughs> so Bone said, well, let me think about it. Yeah. You know? yeah. So then about two or three weeks later, we hadn't heard from him or anything, and we were wondering, Bones hasn't called us back about Aquarius. He calls back, and he said, I think I have a way of making it work. Mm-hmm. How he ever came up with the concept of combining mm -hmm. Aquarius with Let the Sun Shine. Right, yeah, right. I don't know, but that was what it took. That was what set it apart that from the other said, people yes. that had recorded it. Yes. Yes. For sure. Yes. And so he came up with the concept of us singing Aquarius and then kicking into this rousing celebration of let the sun shine in. Mm -hmm. And then when we're in the studio recording it and we've sung, let the sun shine, let the sun shine in, the sun shine in about 15 times. <laughs> and so then Bone says, okay, Billy, now go on in the studio and take it to church. <laughs> said, take it to church. And he said, just go out there and, and just do your gospel thing. Oh, he yeah. said, sing, sing your ad libs and sing, just sing. Yeah, yeah. And Billy went out there and just sang and we were all jumping around in the that studio. That intensity. We were in Las Vegas. That vocal. Yeah. And one of the lines I'll never forget, Billy said, I want you to sing along with the fifth dimension. <laughs> and we all just fell out when we heard that. <laughs> and of course, Bones kept that in there. Oh yeah. That combination just was magic. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. It was meant to be, and yeah. also, it has the distinction of being recorded in two different studios, Las Vegas and California. Exactly yes. right. Yeah, that, had, that right. had not been done very often from a pop song that I can think of at that time. Mm -hmm. Had never been done. And another thing it did is, is, is like uh, let the sun shine in, in flesh failures, which was done at the end of the show yes. of, of, of hair. 
uh, Vaughn's connected it up with, 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 with Aquarius, and we, to- we did it totally a different way. Yeah. And that became the standard. When they did hair another time, they, they did our version instead of the way it was in the, in the regular yeah. uh, the original uh, production. Uh, production. <laughs> the lyrics of the song, of course, based on the astrological belief that the world would soon be entering the age of Aquarius. Mm-hmm. Age of love, light, humanity, unlike the current situation. People have different philosophies of what the age of Aquarius is. They think of it mm-hmm. more upon it now. Some scientists say it's not to like 2026 to 2062. Mm-hmm. They don't know, but... It's the first time I've heard that one. Yeah, yeah. me too. We've they... heard that we've been hearing that we've been... That we're, we're past, 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 past the age of Aquarius. Right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. Such a spiritual song. It just brings the universe closer together. I remember hearing it as a little kid, but then hearing it again in Forrest Gump. Oh, they yeah. Used no, it. Oh, yeah. Right. Right. Wasn't that yeah. amazing? Oh, yeah. We yeah. were so excited when yeah. we heard it in Forrest yeah. Gump. Instead, they decided the best way for me to fight the communists was to play ping pong. And what was cool about that, too, is that Forrest Gump, the way they use that soundtrack is that they go from the baby boom era, you know, 50s to the 80s, and all those key songs, those are the greatest songs of all time. Mm-hmm. To yeah. be able to be one of those songs side by side with, yeah. you know, Buffalo Springfield and, and all these great songs, Fleetwood Mac. Mm-hmm. And these are songs that move the world. One thing about Let the Sunshine In, even today when we do Aquarius Let the Sunshine In, people are up. Oh, yeah. They're up and they they and they clapping and, they, they, and, you, and you think, they're still doing this on this song. Yeah. This song is magic. Yes. Really, it really is. It really is. Yeah. And there's that mystical, cosmic thing about it. It's just mm. got that mystery in it. That's yeah. so Mystic right. crystal revelation. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> We talked about this a little bit, but being kind of the theme of it was all coming together. Summer of Love had happened, but the hippie movement and all of the things that were going on in the world, Vietnam War and Kent State and all these things that were happening, Mm -hmm. music was that thing that was bringing it together. They sang it at Woodstock. Uh One of the days during Woodstock, the crowd sang it and they sang your version and they they just went in this song about Uh it. I thought that was amazing. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. All of the covers to Donna Summer and Ray Stevens, Scylla Black, which Mm -hmm. she covered like every popular American song it seemed like back (laughs) in the day, but Andy Williams, Diana Ross, The Ventures, Mm -hmm. The Osmonds. Hans Zimmer's version, have you guys ever heard that? Bird on a Wire, I thought that was really cool. Did you ever see when they use it in The Simpsons? No, <laughs> no, we didn't see that. <laughs> no. We missed a lot of <laughs> <laughs> But that's great. Well, and then when you won the Grammy Award, you saw the impact that this song had. What was your feeling going forward from there? The feeling yeah. was, okay, what's the next record? Yeah, right, How right, do you right, follow right, up? Right, 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 yes, right, exactly. Right, yeah. What do I do for an encore? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that was rough. Uh, well, we, yeah. were, we were excited to have been a part of that song. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we were excited to see how it came together and yeah. How, yeah. how successful it was. Having no idea that, let's see, so this is 1969, 1970, yes. in 80, 90. Um, we had no idea that 40 years later, when we would sing that song on stage, that the audiences would be jumping up. That's right. And, same thing. And right. the children and the grandchildren. That's yep. right. That's right. All yep. of them. And responding in the same way. All generations. Yes, all yeah. generations. But you know, one of the things that got me, speaking of the, the, the 1970, you know, we were honored to go to do Expo 70 in Japan. Yes. And oh, it's, yeah. so, it's so funny because it was all during the hippie time and the people were wearing the head rags and the and, and all these mod shirts and all this different stuff, you know. So we're in Japan, and it, we look at, at the audience, and they look the same way. <laughs> they look just like we're in the States. 
but only they speak in Japanese. Yeah. You know, and they just, and when we sang Aquarius, they just went crazy. Yep. This stuff. Yep. They couldn't even understand it. You know, I don't think they could, you know, but it's, it's well, amazing how that traveled all over the world. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. music is a universal language. That's it doesn't right. matter exactly what language, right. it's the energy, it's the feeling. It's, that's what again, it proves. the spirituality that was in that song. You yeah. guys created that, and that was a moment in time that was, Eternal, it's lasting right. forever. Yeah. I have no doubt a thousand years from now will still be that song. <laughs> that song <laughs> yeah. that will get people yeah. up and feeling good, you know, and that's what we need is those good that's vibrations. Great. Hey, leave us a comment about this amazing song and about Marilyn and Billy in the fifth dimension. What are your memories of the song? What's your, your take on it? First time you heard it, how the wrecking crew and producer Bones Howe took it to a whole nother level. Let us know in the comments, hair, all that good stuff. If you dig our content, we do invite you to subscribe below. We have videos coming out every day, um, legends being interviewed all the time. Uh, and make sure to look us up on Patreon and check out our merch. This really helps us keep the music alive. That's what this is all about. Till next time, three chords and the truth. Right.